Hi there, thank you for joining me for this lesson on VNet to VNet connectivity using VPN gateways. So where we are going to have a chart about a couple of design considerations followed by a quick demo. First thing first, we know that we can use our VNet peering to create a connection between two different isolated virtual networks uh, if they are maybe in a cross subscription or cross region and so on but uh, what we can do is we can also connect these two different networks not just with the uh, vnet peering we can also introduce a something called vpn gateway a software appliance device which will be provisioned within microsoft azure portal um, this might take a 45 minutes when you provision actually to fully uh, functional state to come and when you enable this specific component called a VPN gateway, it's a software appliance, I would say. When you configure this VPN gateway, it also needs to have a specific uh, gateway subnet so that uh, th that's going to be a special subnet called gateway subnet. So you need to create that gateway subnet before you actually enable this VPN gateway. Uh, and that must be associated within your VNet and followed by when you introduce this uh, VPN gateway within your subnet or within your virtual network it's actually gonna ask you to you know have a public IP because these are originally designed for your on-premises network to connect or a completely globally different regions can be established the connection so you need to uh, give the public IP if not you may have to you know choose one of the public IP to be created within Azure portal and give that and also post to the provisioning which might take a 45 minutes time and post to that you need to configure with a, a shade key so a shade key is a, a passcode kind of uh, shade characters the same characters also other end other end VPN device it can be a physical device or it can be again same VPN as your device that also should have the same key so that both can communicate so what we're gonna do is within the lab we are going to create here a separate vnet and also a separate gateway subnet and then we introduce the vpn gateway so while we are doing the vpn gateway we get a public ip that's a primary public ip of course you can also have the secondary public ip also if you need it and uh, once we have done this configuration we also go for other region here also we will create a different vnet and uh, a different subnet uh, uh, for a gateway specific subnet and then we introduce the vpn gateway and while configuring this vpn gateway it will ask you to choose the public ip we will use that public ip and then we will ask to provision the vpn gateway so while we provisioning it might take a 45 minutes and that gets uh, fully integrated with your vnet so if any any communication should happen from here that's a 10 series to maybe a, to a different series of this network what would happen is you need to have a established a connection between VPN gateways to connect this you need to have a shared password key so that it would actually connect with each other by using that shared passcode and if that matches it will establish a connection so the connection is uh, fully encrypted with the ipsec protocols so that's called vpn tunnel uh, in other way so whatever the communication would happen from this network to here would be completely encrypted the same thing uh, that's the thing you know which we are going to do in the lab um, before we jump into the lab uh, as we talk in the previous or maybe in the next upcoming one of the theoretical um, lecture what we're going to do is we are actually comparing why we need to go for vnet peering why not for vpn gateway so the ideal answer would be if you have a regulatory uh, standards that needs to be uh, go in a transitive routing and it must be encrypted then you would go for vnet to vnet and uh, vnet to vnet connectivity and if you don't need any uh, encryption and you need a low latency and everything should go within the Microsoft uh, as your network a uh, backend uh, a network communication then you would go for VNet peering otherwise you would be going for the VPN gateway and there are different charges that would be applicable uh, for the VPN gateway because it's going to be software appliance that will be a dedicated 
configuration will be assigned for you so let's jump into how it looks like in the portal so within the portal when you're trying to create a connection uh, with the help of your VPN gateway so within the VPN gateway you have three different options you see here you have an option for VNet to VNet configuration so with the uh, VPN gateway you can do the site to site VPN that's nothing but your VNet to VNet or you can use a site to site IPsec tunnel base uh, that's nothing but you have your own premises network and you want to configure your Azure uh, network with your on-premises then you would go for side to side and if at all you have express route you would be using the service provider details and all that plans you would be you no know, going for the express route and let's also have a consideration of highest design how this can be designed and how it's going to be very very useful in terms of the network design if you see here i have a subscription one subscription two subscription one also here so within this subscription i have east us and west us both regions have a different subnets these can be communicated by enabling vnet to vnet peering or vnet to vnet connectivity but if you have on-premises network you can configure site to site VPN tunnel as I said here you have an option to configure within this uh, VPN gateway when you introduce this VPN gateway uh, when you're configuring you have an option called site to site uh, configuration so when you use the site to site configuration this side let's say on your on-premises definitely you don't have Azure appliance because we talked about uh, VPN gateways is software appliance so in this situation on your on premises you might have a, a VPN device that's the physical device maybe semantics or maybe checkpoint or maybe uh, sofas all these devices which will enable you for the VPN connectivity or maybe for that matter maybe a Windows server which will uh, enable your VPN connectivity so whatever the device you have here that must be supported uh, this VPN gateway so does VPN gateway whatever it is there so it has a supported list of devices that can be used on your on-premises network so if you have a VPN device if that's not supported you cannot establish a connection between your VPN gateway that's in Azure cloud to your on-premises for side to side VPN connection otherwise and most of the VPN devices it's supported but you can check the documentation before you actually configure and if the device is supported you can establish a connection called side to side VPN so one of the users uh, sitting here that they can access any of the resources which are available across your as your network if you have a connection is established so the users no need to do a specific VPN tunnel uh, to establish to the Azure network instead uh, one specific device is all the way all the time it will be dedicatedly connected so the connection uh, will route from this VPN device so that's how it's gonna work so let's have a look on it uh, how and what we're gonna do in the next lecture with a complete lab so first what I'm going to do is I have a subscription called uh, subscription one and also two regions have taken um, one from the uh, west region other one from the east region I'm going to create a resource uh, with a VNet called VNet RG that's a resource uh, specific VNet name that's a east US and also within this re within this region also I'm gonna create another VNet so ideally what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create a two uh, VNets in a two different regions and then I would uh, go for a different address space of two different networks let's say in the left side I will go with the 10 series and other one in the right side I would go with the 192 series so opposed to the configuration I would introduce the VPN gateway and then I would make a establish the connection between these two regions so the uh, if I created here virtual machine maybe with the IP of 10.0.0.4 uh, it should be able to communicate with a virtual machine within this network which is a 192 series 
uh, virtual machines and both can be communicated so while I configure uh, here I may have active active or active passive also or on demand also I can go for the configuration but for now I'm going to do this entire lab in the next lecture because that's going to be close to 20 minutes plus because it needs to configure a lot of other steps I don't want to march with this lecture I hope this complete lecture is useful for you Thank you. I will catch you in the next demo lecture.